Hello and welcome to this short explanatory baseline video. My name is Stefan Schmidt, I'm CTO of Unibright and part of the technical steering committee of the baseline protocol. Um, the code repo on GitHub for the baseline protocol will go live today, uh, open source, public, available for everybody. And uh, this video is the opportunity to explain um, why we should think of baseline more like a protocol or a design pattern, but not so much of a product. It's rather about how companies can use this protocol and of course how companies like Unibright can build products around it. Yeah, welcome, have fun. Yeah, thinking of baseline as a design pattern uh, helps us to understand what, uh, what it's all about. Um, it's about bringing processes into blockchain and using uh, the baseline protocol um, as a pattern, how it can be successfully achieved. And we want to give a short example out of the Unibright context um, because what we offer is templates for different use cases um, and you can use our tools to define your specific use case without writing any code. And the use case that we also enabled in our public available demo um, is a multi-party approval process. So basically a checklist of things to be done or to be agreed on and different parties give their okay in a predefined workflow and once all they gave their okay the whole process is, is finished with a uh, dedicated status and our tools to do so um, are for example the Unibright workflow designer um, where you can define that use case visually and then you get the code generated for any smart contract language or any blockchain available. So um, the idea behind it is to have a little less complexity, so not have too much um, knowledge needed by a specific coder, but rather use the knowledge of the domain specialist who knows how the approval process should like, uh, look like rather than knowing how to code it. So, um, yeah, you see a short example that all this is visually and graphical uh, and in the end you have the, the option to generate code. And the understanding of the Unibright framework is to be blockchain agnostic, so you can um, generate code for whatever blockchain, for example, Solidity code for Ethereum. So the result of this whole visual definition process then would be a smart contract living in Ethereum. So um, let's just have a look at how the multi-party approval works on a public chain. So you would use the Unibright framework, you choose a template model, in this case um, a multi-party approval template, and then you create your very uh, specific instance with exactly the workflow steps that you need for your specific approval process, for example, between you and your supplier, and then you generate code out of it. It's a smart contract. And this smart contract can be published to a public blockchain. So there is a smart contract um, representing the state flow of the approval process and also holding the current state of approval. So you can always look up which of the participants already gave their OK or perhaps uh, declined a step or rejected a step. So from a, a perspective of a of an enterprise, there may be some issues they have with the privacy of their processes because once it's on a public blockchain, even though it's all about addresses who run transactions um, and they are somehow pseudonymized, it's still that third party could get some information out of it just because the smart contract is there. For example, you could, um, so to say, screen the, the blockchain for uh, other smart contracts of that type and then you would have an idea like okay this uh, party who did the smart contracts they do like 100 approval processes each day might give you some idea or insight uh, who this enterprise is or you can check the timestamps when the participants gave their okay and then telling from different time zones it might be that you tell that they are all from Europe or Asia or the USA whatever. Um, what I want to say is that the blockchain features that are promising because it's immutable and uh, you can uh, use it like a like a registrar to uh, or a notary service to see who gave their okay it's still um, a problem for some of the enterprises to make this public 
So our approach from Unibright, of course, from the very beginning was to support many different blockchains being blockchain agnostic. And then the answer might have been, okay, don't take a public chain, but rather take a private chain, which basically um, looks just the same. You use the Unibright framework to create smart contract code, and this one then is published to a private blockchain. But still, um, if it's a private or permission chain within a consortium, then perhaps you have not like only two or three participants, but hundreds or thousands of them, even if it's a private blockchain. And you have pretty much the same problems as, as with a public blockchain, because there may be participants in this consortium that should not know uh, details about, for example, approval processes of other parties. Um, so the idea, the, one of the main goals of the, the baseline protocol is to provide uh, privacy um, in business processes, but still using the public available blockchain with all the uh, countless nodes that uh, contribute to the overall security of the system to use that public blockchain, some kind of uh, a middleware or a messaging bus. So in um, baseline, the complete process would uh, look like this. You still have a template model, you still have your template instance, and in the end, you do not create a smart contract, but something that is called a shared code book uh, within the um, baseline wording. And this shared code book uh, holds the workflow of that approval process, for example, in whatever code, for example, Solidity, but it could also be like C -sharp .net, or it could be, um, it could be SAP code, whatever the parties who are participating on this approval process are agreeing on. And then <clears throat> this shared code book is uh, used by all the participants. So the baseline architecture ensures that the participants can all be sure that the other party is using the, the same code, that they not altered it in any uh, of their favor, but all are relying on the same code and they do the, the messaging, so for example, giving an approval in a private manner, like in a broadcasting network. The, the first version is using the Whisper protocol, but this may change to, to a more feasible protocol during the lifetime of the baseline development. Um, the important thing is it's not on a public blockchain, it's within uh, the baseline architecture, so to say, where different microservices talk to each other and can share information and can execute code based um, on a trusted manner. And the mainnet basically is used to, um, to as a notary service to uh, put the different states that this workflow is in. For example, with every added approval, um, the mainnet is used to put hashes on the mainnet, um, shield it so that other parties who just are able to, um, to to look at the mainnet are not able to tell who are the parties that gave some uh, or, or added some hashes to the mainnet and especially not what these hashes stand for. So there is no um, option for a third party to tell from, from timestamps or from the content what is actually hashed or which uh, business process is um, used here or who are the participants. So this is the, the main idea. You have the mainnet with all its, uh, it's always on, it's a public available blockchain. Um, and you have your own baseline architecture between all participants of a, um, of a business process. And from the Unibright perspective, it's just the same um, as before. It's still very valuable and meaningful to have uh, all the code generation stuff beforehand, because uh, now it's even more important if you talk about shared code books. So code that is not only published once in one smart contract in one blockchain, but is shared between the participants, then it's uh, even more important that they all rely on the same understanding and the same model and not have like um, individual coding for these code books for every single use case they want to, um, they want to apply on the on blockchain. So um, this is the, the, the basic idea and from, from Unibright, um, all that we build with that workflow designing, the automatic code generation, the automatic integration of off-chain systems using uh, that, these code books and also the contracts on the mainnet uh, makes perfectly sense. Um, and that's, that's a good thing for us, of course. Um, and there are even 
steps that you don't don't only use the mainnet as a, a messaging bus, but as soon as it comes into tokenization. So if you represent identities by tokens, for example, um, if you have products that you want to track, then you could represent the single products as tokens and move them around as they move around in the in the real world or change ownership when the real world ownership changes. So everything that comes around when, it, when it's really about tokens, then of course the mainnet or for example Ethereum makes even more sense uh, because it's not only used as a message bus but also as a place where token contracts can live and uh, do what they are supposed to do. And just to have a short outlook if tokenization even goes further, uh, further like that what we understand or we bundle within Unipride Frequity, so representing real-world assets or securities, uh, then it even makes more sense. Um, I'm mentioning all that because, of course, we are blockchain agnostic and uh, baseline protocol um, emphasizes on using the, the mainnet, so the public Ethereum blockchain, um, as a messaging bus. Theoretically, of course, you could use other blockchains as well. And um, as it's an open source pattern, it's perhaps likely to be adopted by other blockchains as well. But as soon as tokenization comes in, of course, it's always valuable to keep in mind where do 99% of the tokens nowadays live as ERC-20 tokens or security tokens or whatever. Um, it's Ethereum and that's why it's a very good choice, in, in our opinion, to start. And everything that is built around baseline coming from integration, for example, um, bringing an SAP system to use the baseline protocol could also, at the time given, be adopted to other blockchains if, if needed. Um, but I think in the, in the bootstrapping phase where we are currently uh, at, the Ethereum blockchain is just the perfect choice and um, we see what the future brings. We are very excited and so far for the baseline, seeing it as a design pattern rather than a product. Yeah, so far so good. There will be a lot of material to come, um, also more deep diving stuff really into the tech stuff and showing some um, coding and development progress also from Unibright. Um, if you are interested in some of the links or resources I mentioned during the video, please check out the um, description section of this YouTube video and also the corresponding blog on Unibright.io. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.